Good afternoon, I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on onespotmedia.com. The parliamentary opposition is supporting the call by the Medical Association of Jamaica MAJ for the government to impose mandatory COVID-19 testing for tourists when the country reopens to non-national arrivals on Monday. MAJ President Dr. Andrew Manning said arrangements could be made for source countries to organize testing before the passengers leave. Opposition spokesman on health Dr. Morris Guy says pre-testing would provide a greater sense of security to stakeholders. It would give the visitors a sense of security that they are coming to a country where there is no coronavirus because you have pre-testing facilities. And in fact, that would augur well for the tourism product. It will make Brand Jamaica better because the visitors will recognize that they are coming to an environment where their health status is protected. The government announced that arrivals would be from countries which had screening protocols in place and tourists would be restricted to a selected area along the north coast. Dr. Guy believes pre-testing would reduce the potential of a further spike in coronavirus cases in Jamaica. Even though you may have a test which is a false negative, i.e. a person who would be positive but the test initially showed a negative um, testing, we would have less numbers of persons coming to the country who would be positive because you have excluded all the positive ones before. Now, we would still have the potential for the false negatives to create problems in the country, but we would have less of those. Executive Director at the Legal Aid Council, Hugh Faulkner, is calling for early psychiatric assessments of all accused persons taken into police custody. Mr. Faulkner was speaking this morning on TVJ Smile Jamaica. He explained that an early psychiatric assessment can help protect mentally ill persons from other inmates or detainees. When he is mentally ill and goes in the general population, Dela, if you go there for any crime against a child, sexual offense, they are at risk. So I support that call that an early intake examination be done. So the mechanism must be set up that a person, as soon as they enter custody, the, the psychiatric assessment is done. But the call follows debate about persons being held behind bars for decades without trial. This follows the death of an 81-year-old inmate at the Tower Street Adult Correctional Facility. Frustration is brewing in the Jamaica Civil Service Association following a decision by the government to cut spending on travel for civil workers, civil service workers. The issue was discussed this morning on Power 106 FM's Morning Agenda program. Details in this report. The Ministry of Finance earlier this week announced plans to cut some expenditure in a bid to balance the budget for the current fiscal year 2020-2021. But that is not going down well with at least one association which represents civil servants. President of the Jamaica Civil Service Association, O'Neill Grant, says the majority of the people he represents need the mileage claim as they are not stationed at the location where the work is being carried out. He says based on the disclosure of Permanent Secretary Darlene Morrison in the PAAC, a wider discussion should have been had so more people could benefit from an exemption except police officers. Our challenge is, and generally has been, that when there are serious changes across the entire public sector, this is not a one agency situation now, this is across the entire public sector, we expect that the, the union representing public officers will be a part of that consultation because we have concerns and we must represent the interests of our members and we are not getting the opportunity to do so at the front end of the whole thing. We have been placed in a reactionary position because there is no consultation. Mr. Grant says he has since met with his members who are not happy. He says the union is preparing to send a letter to the finance ministry containing a myriad of complaints. I am getting tired of the lack of response from our ministry and the lack of accommodation when we have to deal with matters that are public sector-wide and it needs to come to an end. We will write our letter of protest to the ministry and let them know how we feel about what has happened. Uh, but we have to do our own consultation with our members because we don't want to go off and, and voice something that is not um, in the interest of our members. So your members are restive? They are restive and they have been restive for a while for other things. 
And it is time now for the ministry to understand that we, even in this state of COVID-19, we have some things outstanding that we need to have dealt with. There are matters that we have written to the ministry and they have not addressed. And we are now getting quite anxious. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. Trouble seems to be on the horizon in the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation. It stems from concerns raised by, nor my, by minority members alleging irregularities. It's understood that an internal audit uncovered issues relating to amusement permits and licenses paid for and issued. The Auditor General has been contacted to assist the investigation. Speaking with Sanjay Lewis on Power 106 FM's Morning Agenda Thursday, the corporation's minority leader, Andrew Swaby, was shocked that the issues were not discussed first with council members. I am baffled because I wonder why the town clerk, the CEO, have sent it all of a sudden to the, um, to the, the Auditor General. Is it because he was going before the PAC last week, why he has, he has sent it? Or is it because we have moved a resolution, which was debated on Tuesday, to ask for all unanswered questions to be answered? And the, the audit committee was one such question, which was on the audit paper. And what the mayor had done was to, to say that the audit committee is being finalized. Mayor of Kingston, Delroy Williams, says the process is ongoing and that is why the other councillors have not been formally informed. For us, the, mm -hmm. the report is not concluded as yet because we have asked for the audit to be expanded to include other licenses, mm -hmm. such as barbers and hairdressers and yeah. so forth. So we are expanding the audit to look at other areas just to ensure that the, the practices is not widespread across other licenses issued. So, and that's part of the reason why we have all asked the Auditor General and, the, and in particular the Ministry of Local Government to assist us. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. We have much more stories when we return. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. Dr. Peter Phillips says any challenge to his post as opposition leader and PNP president before the next general election would tantamount to an effort to destroy the party. He made the comment yesterday in an interview with Radio Jamaica's Earl Moxham. Dr. Phillips said he did not expect a challenge in the near future. Anyone who did that would be clearly engaging in an effort to destroy the party. Now, many people can survive personally, irrespective of what happens in the country. They may figure they have, you know, social position, strength of cash, good job, whatever. But I think the point that came out in that meeting was that there is a prior obligation which the People's National Party has to the country and to create the environment in a country that will allow us to secure a better Jamaica. Meanwhile, despite his cancer diagnosis, Dr. Phillips says he's fitter than before to carry out rigorous campaigning for a general election. It was revealed in April that the opposition leader was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. He did surgery on March 23 to remove the cancer and is now suggesting his health issues are behind him. I am healed, in effect, because there is no cancer in the, in the body. I have been doing the subsequent therapies, no ill effects, and um, it's been going well, and the blood tests and everything reveal that there is no deleterious effect on the body. So... I mean, anything I can do, I did before, I can do now. And in fact, do it with more verve and energy because of the improved health situation. Worried residents of low-lying and flood-prone areas of southern Clarendon have been promised that their drains and waterways will be cleaned before expected flood rains that come in the hurricane season. The Atlantic hurricane season started on June 1. Many of the communities in southern Clarendon are also coastal towns, and that increases the risk of flooding. Our first priority is to make sure that we clean as many drains as possible. 
and that means using the little money that we're going to get in the smartest way. So we are doing a full assessment of all drains across our constituency to make sure that whatever allocation we put towards drain cleaning um, is maximized in its potential to avert any flooding um, or damage to any of our houses or residents in this constituency. MP for Southern Clarendon, Pernell Charles Jr. says drains in Palmer's Cross need improvement work. Repairs have begun on the badly deteriorated road. We have been to Palmer's Cross every single week monitoring the work and ensuring that the work continues as efficiently and effectively as possible. What we are doing now is we are reaching out to the relevant ministers and, and ministry rather to make sure that the proper drainage is put in place accompanying the road work because uh, we don't want to, to build the road and then have the road not sustainable. TVJ Sports has learned that more than 80% of jockeys and just under 50% of trainers are not currently licensed to ride or train horses at Caymanus Park as stakeholders look to get racing started in short order. Denise Walters is tracking this TVJ exclusive. Reports are that only 17 of the 99 jockeys who were registered up to December 2019 are currently licensed to ride at Caymanus Park. This according to figures contained in documents obtained from the Jamaica Racing Commission JRC on Wednesday by TVJ Sports. Efforts to obtain a comment from President of the Jamaica Jockeys Guild Shane Ellis were unsuccessful up to sports time as calls and messages to his phone over the last few days were not returned. However, speaking with TVJ Sports on June 1, Ellis had indicated that his members were ready to resume race riding as soon as the industry was reopened. So we just have to just keep our fingers crossed and, and open for the best. But myself and, and the other jockeys, we're raring to go. We're working horses in the morning, training in the evening, so um, we're raring to go. Responding to queries from TVJ Sports on Monday via text message, Chairman of the JRC Clovis Metcalf wrote, quote, we will investigate, end quote, adding, quote, we have been hearing numerous concerns over the weekend relicensees, end quote. Jockeys are required to pay a total of $39,600 for licensing, registration, and insurance, with $3,600 going towards the licensing and registration over a 12-month period. Meanwhile, TVJ Sports has also confirmed that 52%, or 80 of the 153 trainers who were licensed as of December 2019, are licensed to train dating up to June 10, 2020. TVJ Sports sought a reaction from President of the United Racehorse Trainers Association, Ryan Darby. Well, Denise, uh, with the limited amount of licensed trainer, I think that is based on the economical condition that the trainers are under. But I'm quite sure that as soon as the projection date is released, you'll have a, a, a large amount of trainers being licensed. So I don't think, I don't think uh, we'll have a problem rectifying it. In April, the JRC had announced that it would be waiving 100% of fees for all new and renewing applicants of the various occupational groups for the period May 1 to August 31 of this year to help ease the financial impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on horsemen. Darby said that waiver was appreciated. However, his group have some worry. So licensing fee was, was helpful in some sense, but I say that the expensive part of paying for licensing was insurance, which, which will still have to be done by the trainers. So it's really a financial uh, crisis we are in. The total licensing registration and insurance fee per year for each trainer currently amounts to $50,200, with the licensing and registration totaling $4,000. Local racing has been indefinitely suspended since late March. Denise Walters for TVJ Sports. And that's it for the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.